California is hit hard by an opioid epidemic. Solution? Pay people to not do drugs. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. More and more people are dying from drug overdoses in the U.S. It's definitely gotten worse since the pandemic lockdown. And you thought Tiger King was the worst thing people binged last year. But America's drug problem was getting worse even before Tiger King. Overdose deaths involving prescription opioids more than quadrupled from 1999 to 2019. And, as a number of legal cases reveal, some of America's biggest pharmaceutical companies are to blame, although that's probably a topic for another episode. Big Pharma is responsible for more American deaths than Big Macs, and that's probably a topic for another, another episode. The point is, the opioid crisis is bad. And in particular, a synthetic opioid called fentanyl is making it worse. Even the Golden State with its blue skies and artisanal kale smoothies, is not immune to the growing crisis. You can tell there's a drug problem in California, considering Hollywood keeps letting M. Night Shyamalan make movies. Whoever greenlit this seriously needs rehab. But thousands of people are dying every year from opioids in California. The yellow line is synthetic opioids, including fentanyl. Overdose deaths are rising fast. Fentanyl is so powerful that a quantity small enough to fit under a fingernail can be deadly within minutes. In California, we're seeing adolescents as young as 13 overdose on counterfeit opioid pills available for home delivery over the internet. That's the worst thing I've heard delivered to a 13-year-old since Aunt Esther's drunk toast at Moishe's bar mitzvah. Deaths from fentanyl overdoses have jumped by more than 2,100% in five years. And it's not just opioids. Overdose deaths from stimulants in California nearly quadrupled between 2010 and 2019. And, like with opioids, the pandemic lockdown made things worse. Preliminary data from the first nine months of 2020 shows stimulant overdose deaths jumped by 42% compared to 2019. So California needs to get its drug problem under control. The government's answer? The same answer to whenever someone asks how a guy like this landed a wife like that. Money. California wants to become the first state to pay drug addicts to stay sober. Find out the details after the break. Welcome back. The state of California has a brilliant, idea to tackle their drug overdose crisis. Pay people to not use drugs. This is called contingency management. See, treatments that focus on punishment for not staying sober can alienate a person from the therapeutic community, break their self-confidence, and reduce their motivation for change. It turns out making people feel lonely, worthless, and depressed makes them want to do drugs. Even Ray Charles could have seen that coming. You know, because he did lots of drugs. That's why there's contingency management. It uses positive reinforcement. So instead of punishing people for doing something bad, you reward them for doing something good. Here's how contingency management works when applied to drug addiction. If you're a drug user, every time you don't test positive for drugs in a urine test, you earn a prize. If you do test positive for drugs, you don't get the prize. It's kind of like a carnival game, which is ironic since carnies would never be able to pass a drug test. There are two types of rewards-based systems widely used in addiction treatment, voucher-based reinforcement and prize incentives. Voucher-based reinforcement rewards a recovering drug abuser by giving a voucher, which has cash value that can be then used to buy things like food, clothing, movie passes, restaurant gift certificates, or electronics. The more negative test results you get, the more valuable the vouchers get. In some programs, people are given cash instead of vouchers. Here's how prize incentives work. If you test negative for drugs, you can draw a slip from a fishbowl for a cash prize. It's like a lottery. 
I guess the best way to overcome a drug addiction is with a gambling addiction. That long pinky nail isn't for cocaine. It's for scratcher tickets. Supposedly, when used with medications and or other treatment therapies, contingency management may increase treatment retention rates and improve a client's chance of sobriety and recovery success. Other treatment therapies might include things like group or individual counseling. The National Institute on Drug Abuse, the leading federal research institute on drug addiction, says this treatment approach can be effective. This is backed by studies on contingency management for smoking, alcohol addiction, cocaine, and methamphetamine. But sadly, not for the saddest addiction of all. Constantly bragging about minor accomplishments on Facebook. At any rate, California Governor Gavin Newsom has asked the federal government for permission to use tax dollars to pay for a contingency management program through Medicaid. He needs permission because part of Medicaid is funded by federal money, meaning Americans in other states would also be footing the bill for California's experiment, which would be a tough pill for them to swallow, considering all the best movie ideas in Hollywood come from people who are on tons of drugs. Except M. Night Shyamalan. Gavin Newsom isn't the first California politician to come up with the idea to pay people to not use drugs. Last year, State Senator Scott Weiner introduced Senate Bill 888 to allow California's Medicaid program to pay for contingency management. Earlier this year, Weiner introduced Senate Bill 110 to promote the same thing. In 2019, San Francisco Mayor London Breed convened a methamphetamine task force. And no, it wasn't the banned corn, even though they do look like a methed up task force. London Breed's task force issued 17 recommendations to stem the use of drugs, including expanding the use of contingency management. But there's a reason why healthcare providers and the federal government are hesitant to promote it. I'll explain after the break. Welcome back. Even though the National Institutes of Health said contingency management is an effective way to keep people sober, there are several concerns. Some healthcare providers say contingency management is designed to be deceptive. In other words, it is designed to make clients think they will win large sums of money if they succeed, when in fact, the probability of that happening is extremely low. We already established it was a lottery. Did they not know how lotteries work? And its effect decreases over time as clients realize that the probability of winning large sums of money is, in fact, lower than expected. In that case, they should give them a big hit of money at the beginning, then less and less over time so they're always chasing that initial feeling of euphoria. I know that's problematic, but I also bet it works. Maybe not forever, though, because according to the Journal of Clinical Medicine, patients who receive contingency management are more likely to be abstinent but only in the short term. The Society for the Study of Addiction says adding prize-based contingency management to behavioral support for drug abuse doesn't increase abstinence after just six months. But even if it could work beyond six months, which it doesn't, contingency management raises some ethical questions. Is rewarding patients for abstinence appropriate? And should other Americans have to foot the bill for it? If I could pay Americans to do something they should already be doing, I'd prefer to pay them to clean up after their dogs, use their turn signals, and stop constantly bragging about minor accomplishments on Facebook. Now, contingency management doesn't actually cost that much. It winds up being, on average, just a few hundred dollars per patient. That's a drop in the bucket compared to the billions of dollars California spends every year to combat substance abuse and addiction. But still, there are legal complications. It's not clear if state and federal law allow Medicaid money to pay for it. California has a law prohibiting people from profiting or receiving kickbacks from treatment programs. These laws are intended to prevent fraud, waste, and abuse, and provide a mechanism to penalize providers that try to direct patients toward a specific treatment program or health insurance plan. That's why the federal government in the past has said no to funding programs like this. And if it raises tricky ethical concerns and can only address drug addiction in the short term, 
Is contingency management really a program California wants to pursue? According to Governor Gavin Newsom, yes. But according to residents who get to vote in two weeks on whether to recall Governor Newsom over a wide range of policy concerns, we'll have to wait and see. And depending on just how widespread drug use in California is, we might see this problem pass on to California's next governor, Angeline, the billboard queen. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, please know we could not do it without direct support from viewers like you. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered and contribute a dollar or more per episode to help us keep the show going. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.